Hey guys, this is Mike uh, with Ideas by Mike. This week on Stories, Resources, and Ideas, we're going to talk about what it's like when the tide rolls back and things get exposed in the ocean. All right, well, can't wait to share some stories with you on that. All right, welcome to this week's Stories, Resources, and Ideas, powered by Ideas by Mike. I am your host, Mark Conway, and joined every week by Mr. Mike Milligan. How are you, man? The weather is up and down, but it's been kind of nice and cool lately. Right, and we are all starting to get ready for the summer. You know, we've got a a great weekend plan coming up. We're going to go drink some wine together. Yep. And... Uh, and uh, hang out with a thousand or so of our closest friends. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to the summer as most people are warm weather. I love it. And that's, I'm excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today because it's very much a summer theme, but you're just back from doing some traveling, right? Down the good old South Carolina. I did. I was in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, Lake Murray country to be exact, hosting the world food championships final table where we crowned, this season's grand food champion, the world food champion. And uh, he walked away with about $100,000 of cash and prizes. And he's a pretty interesting story, actually. Uh, love to have him on. We, you know how much I love stories. But yep. I, I, I think I saw when you were down there, uh, more of like, a, at, I guess, the final table. They had to go out. Some, some of these people who've never done anything outdoorsy in their life, right? Mm-hmm. But they yeah. had to go out fishing or whatever and whatever they called is what they got to cook oh yeah that was the second challenge so you started with the 10 category champions from this past year's world food championships after the first challenge which was a biscuit dish the second challenge was they were already windled down to the top five so five went home after challenge one the second one was catch and cook so we went out on lake murray and each of the five competitors were out on a boat with an angler and they had an hour to catch striped bass. And then they had to come back uh, into the main kitchen and cook their best striped bass dish to go down to the final three. And then the final challenge was quail. And believe it or not, the world food champion for this current season was a 19-year-old who is still in culinary school. That's how good this kid is. Shut the front door. Holy cow, man. That's going to be it's going to be amazing to follow this kid's career. Absolutely. Nice. He's a food prodigy. He yeah, won man. he won the World Food Championships at 18 because it was this past November. Yeah. Turns 19, goes to final table, wins the World Food Championship with his dad and his mom as his sous chefs. And I'm I'm when I tell you the kid's a prodigy, he is a food prodigy. Can't wait to hear more about him. So that's going to be amazing. So well, I uh Part of uh, part of our story today is, I think we've probably all been at the beach before, and uh, you know, probably thought about uh, seeing somebody at the beach saying uh, they probably shouldn't have worn that to the beach. You know, we that kind of little that little view where like I could have lived my whole life and not have seen that. But you know, we we do that. We go to the beach and see that here, kind of from an American point of view, at the beaches we go to. But there's other parts of the world where when they go to the beach, they wear even less clothing. And I'm talking in particular about men in a type of swimsuit known as a Speedo. Mark, do you own a Speedo? No. No, no, no. Mm -mm. We are going to get you a custom Ideas by Mike Speedo um, for you to have to wear when you lose a wager sometime. But, you know, the men... In other parts of the world, you know, when they come here and they're out in the water, you know, they're wearing a Speedo and you don't really know. Like when you're out in the water, out in the ocean, whether you're in a Caribbean blue ocean or, you know, the ocean here of the Atlantic or Pacific or, you know, you just don't know. I mean, you Mm -hmm. see people, you know, from here up, I mean, from the from your chest up when they're out taking a taking a dip in the in the water. But. You know, sometimes, you know, the tide goes in, the tide comes back. But when the tide's going back, you know, when the water's retreating, uh, 
those people who like to wear Speedos in their life, it's revealed. And you're like, whoa, I wish I did not see that. I just wish I didn't see that. And uh, I, I, I start with this, uh, uh, this par- I guess it's a parable more than it is a real story, to get people's mind thinking about, well, yeah, I really don't want to see somebody in a Speedo, but that's really what's happening today. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening in the markets right now. That's what's happening in our everyday life is we have all been kind of just floating around swimming financially for the last 10, 12 years because of great economic, robust economies. We hit the pandemic and all of a sudden a bunch of stimulus money comes into the markets And here we are at a point in time where we've been floating financially, where things have been good. Our 401k balance has gone up. Our, Mm -hmm. our, you know, we, our paychecks have been pretty steady or going up. We've had great low interest rates where you could buy a home where the rates were at two and a half percent. Well, the tide is back now, Mark, the tide is coming back and it's revealing a lot of things that are just like hard for us to have seen. And so today I'm, you know, that story piece now is really, I'm going to talk more about resources today than I am that tied back to that story about the tide being rolled back and things being revealed is because I think it's timely. The markets are adjusting back. Interest rates are going up. Uh, We've got the threat of recession. So this is going to be, for those of us who kind of hear stories about how people have made money in the past, this is also going to be about that, but this is one that you have to take action on uh, and you have to get yourself better aligned and better positioned. So when the tide rolls back, I want to keep going with this beach analogy for a second, but when the tide rolls back and it reveals things, those of us who are witnessing it on 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 the shorelines can either sit there and stare at it straight on just stare at the Speedo with the hair coming out everywhere. I mean, just horrible, right? We can sit there and stare at it all day. Or we can shift our focus to something else that's more beautiful. I mean, it could be the the beautiful person who goes to the gym, you know, five days a week and eats healthy that should be wearing a swimsuit the right way. We shift our focus to something that's more attractive. And that's what right now is happening in the market. And so I want to, my resources where I want to talk about today is we need to shift focus. We need to stop looking at higher interest rates. We need to stop looking at the market going down in value. And we need to start focusing on what is attractive in the marketplace right now. And look at those resources and then how can we turn those resources into money with some really good ideas. And so... Just like on that beach where you could turn and see something attracting down the line, when interest rates go up and when there's big inflation, we have to say, okay, what does that impact? Mark, were you actively involved and in working in 1978? No. Yeah, I wasn't either. That's the last time. 1978, 79, and 80 was the last time these Speedos were revealed in the form of inflation. That's the last time that we've had inflation like we have today. And so uh, 90% or more of people have never ex- experienced, working people have experienced what's going on with inflation right now. I mean, we're seeing gas prices over $4 a gallon. We yep. think that's because of a war or an attempt or war uh, conflict over in Ukraine, that's part of it, but gas prices are going to go up anyway because of inflation. Mm-hmm. We go out to dinner now and what cost $40 last year cost 60 this year. That's inflation. Mm-hmm. You know, when we pop out on, when you were traveling down to South Carolina, I mean, you got hit with gas, but then your food costs, I mean, well, you're at a food cooking championship, so you probably got to nibble here and there on some really good food, a lot of sea bass. And other things, but food prices are up through the roof. Hotel stays are up through the roof. But here's how we combat inflation, just like people did in seventy eight, seventy nine, and eighty. You have to own. You have to own assets. 
you have to own real estate or own stocks or own other assets that are that appreciate in value that will go up with that. And a lot of times is what happens is when they see that that speedo, they focus on the speedo and don't mm-hmm. divert their attention. And what you have to divert your attention to in rising interest rates and higher inflation is that you have to keep buying stuff. You have to keep buying stocks. You have to keep buying mutual funds. You have to keep buying exchange traded funds. If you have the ability to buy real estate, you have to buy it. You have to put your money where assets are. Because if you don't do that, your purchase, your your dollar that you're just sitting there and hoarding because you're too scared to do anything is losing value. There's a there's a calculator out there. This is a resource for you. USinflationcalculator.com. USinflationcalculator.com. You can literally go out there and put in a year, like for instance, 2020. Put in what year it is now, 2022, and put how much money you had in 2020 in the bank. Let's say it was $100,000, and it would show you how much you had to return on that money of those two years to keep pace with inflation. Well, that number is about 12%. You would have had to earn 12% on your cash over two years to keep pace with inflation. Mm. You can't do that with money set in the bank account. That's why you have to divert. You have to see past the tide going out and divert to something that's more attractive and find something that's going to earn money. And a lot of people will say to me, well, Mike, inflation and interest rates are not the only problem out there. The stock market is going down too. That brings us back to another point here. Not only you have to divert again and start learning about something called dollar cost averaging. That is where you, over a period of time, you consistently put money toward your savings and investment plan. If you if you're buying for instance XYZ stock, that stock doesn't exist, but there's plenty of companies that have been like this. If on the first of every month you buy a hundred dollars of XYZ stock, if on the first of this month that stock's worth ten dollars, that means you're buying 10 shares, a hundred dollars times ten dollars. If that stock goes down 10% next month, so now that stock price is worth $9, at $100, you're now buying 11.1 shares. So over two months, you have 21.1 shares, 10 from the first month, 11.1 from the second month. If that thing goes down 10% again, and it goes down to $8 a share, in the third month, you're buying 12.5 shares, same $100. So every when the market's going down, you're buying more of something. Mm-hmm. Now, eventually, if you pick something that's good with good earnings, good history, there's no guarantee it's going to go up, but just look at the history of the market. Markets generally go up over time. If it in month four turns around and goes up to twenty dollars a share, month four is twenty dollars a share, you can only buy five shares then because you have a hundred dollars, it's worth twenty dollars a share, you can only buy five shares. But those 23 and a half shares are now going to be worth $460. Your $300 investment is now worth $460. You have to buy using dollar cost averaging something every month. We do that with 401k plans, thrift saving plans if you're a federal employee. But you have to use the resource of dollar cost averaging. That's how you keep yourself uh, kind of focused on what's uh, on what's attractive versus what's in the market. And then the third piece, the third resource, so don't worry about inflation, but calculate what your inflation's be on uscalculator.com. Uh, then the uh, others, dollar cost averaging. And the third piece you do to divert your attention is you just have to reassess your goals. I mean, if if you're 68 years old and you need your money in one year, you probably shouldn't be as focused on short-term performance as what others are focused on. So uh, so you have to look not only at what inflation and interest rates are doing to money, on what the power of dollar cost average is, but you really just need, need to reassess where you are. And so, uh, Mark, 
next time you go to a beach and the tide's rolling out, are you going to focus on the water or are you going to look around for other opportunities? Uh, I'm going to focus on the water, depending on what's in the water at the moment, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You see, if you see a guy that's all hairy up here and the tide's rolling back, you probably would have turned this way. (laughs) Right. Right. Uh, That's, and I think that what all of this, you know, sitting and listening to you talk about this, there's so many facets to it. You know, all of us have a job that we do, a career that we do. Those are the things that we know. So those are the things that are routine for us. We know the routine in our households. We know those things. When it comes to you start talking about inflation and the money that you have, what you want it to be later, you have to have somebody that knows that like we all know our jobs. And that's why working with a financial planner is so key to be able to get from where you are to where you want to be in retirement or even just to to stick, keep pace, like you said, with what's happening in inflation. So many of us don't even think about inflation as much anymore because it's not nearly as talked about as much as in the 80s and the 90s. In the 80s and 90s, inflation was was every third story on the news. Right. Now, it's very little talked about because of everything else going on. And that's why reaching out to you and your team is so critical for all of us because there's no way I can sit around and have any chance of knowing enough about this to make sure that I stay ahead of where I need to be. That's exactly right. Now, it'll be but when, when uh, inflation becomes a predominant conversation in news, it's starting to leak out there again. People are starting to feel it. Mm-hmm. Wise people are talking about it. But when it's all plastered on the news 100%, it's almost too late to react. You've already seen it. You've already yep. felt it. It's already hit you. So, right. uh, so, I mean, it's just something that you need to focus on now before it gets too late. So couldn't agree more. And guys, you can do that by visiting the website, meetwithmikemilligan.com. Again, that's meetwithmikemilligan.com. And then keep up with Instagram at Ideas by Mike. Mike and his team are who you're going to hear from when you send your messages in. It's not a bot. It's not anybody else. It's Mike and the team because they want to make sure they understand your stories to come up with ideas to utilize the resources that are available to you that for the mo- for the most of us, we have no idea they're out there. And that's what Mike and his team is for. So like and share Ideas by Mike on Instagram and then regularly visit uh, meetwithmikemilligan.com to see these resources that are available and schedule a time to meet with Mike and his team. Thanks, Mark. You got it. Well, uh, let's enjoy this weekend. We're going to hope yeah. the weather staves off for us a little bit. And uh, guys, caring is sharing. We'll see you next week. 